friends i am dr tanu and i'm back with another exciting and interesting topic in ophthalmology and that's orbit so let's begin with our orbital anatomy so what are these orbits so these orbits are basically spaces or cavities within your skull bones they are two in number one for each eye now looking at the structure of the orbit they are basically quadrangular a truncated pyramidal uh, structure that they have or shape that they have so it basically has four walls superior inferior medial and lateral and posteriorly all these four walls are going to converge onto the orbital apex which will show presence of few openings which are very important and i'll come on to them in the subsequent slides so let's begin with the walls of the orbit so what are these walls of the orbit so the first one is your roof so roof is formed by frontal bone the orbital plate of the frontal bone so there is frontal bone here so frontal bone and the lesser wing of sphenoid so these are the two bones that are going to form the roof you are supposed to know all these bones because they can be asked in mcq so this is an important slide now coming on to the lateral wall so you see zygomatic bone on this side so it is the zygomatic bone and the greater wing of sphenoid that will form the lateral wall so your lateral wall is also the strongest of all the four walls so it is the strongest now coming on to the floor the floor is basically formed by zygomatic bone maxillary bone and the palatine bone posteriorly so it is zygomatic on this side maxillary on this side and posteriorly it is going to be your palatine bone and it is the floor of the fracture which will get fractured during your blow out trauma or your uh, closed globe injury that you're going to get that is going to produce a blow out fracture due to fracture of inferior wall or the floor of the orbit so this is an important point now coming on to the medial wall so medial wall is basically formed by maxillary bone uh, so it is the lacrimal process of the maxillary bone the lacrimal bone in itself so from anterior to posteriorly there is maxillary bone there is lacrimal bone then there is ethmoid and there is sphenoid so there are four bones that are going to form your medial wall although there are four bones involved it is the thinnest of all the four walls and hence it is known as lamina papyracea important point so your medial wall is known as lamina papyracea and it is thinnest of all the four walls so strongest was your lateral wall and thinnest will be your medial wall inferior wall or your floor is going to be involved in blow out fracture now again your medial wall is lying in close association with your ethmoidal sinus and hence presence of any ethmoidal sinusitis can just penetrate through this wall since it is very thin and can present in the eye in the form of orbital cellulitis so two points that you need to remember with your medial wall that it is thinnest known as lamina papyracea and since it lies in close association with ethmoidal sinuses it can just break through this uh, bone and can cause orbital cellulitis so various bones involved in the orbital wall formation and its anatomical significance all of this is really important to know now as i told you all these four walls are going to converge onto the orbital apex now the orbital apex basically shows two important openings one will be your superior orbital fissure and another will be your orbital apex or your or optic foramen okay now coming on to the superior orbital fissure so superior orbital fissure basically is a fissure that is formed by your greater and the lesser wing of sphenoid and it is sickle shaped in so the shape if you see this is your orbital fissure that you see here and this is going to be formed between your greater and lesser wing of sphenoid and this fissure is then going to be divided into various portions by this annulus of zin so can you appreciate these four muscles so these are your four recti muscles superior inferior medial and lateral together they will form circle known as circle of zin so it is a tendinous ring and it is basically the site of origin of these four recti muscles so these together will form a ring and will divide this superior orbital fissure into various portion so the portion medial to it will contain various structures and uh, you are expected to know these structures so you would be covering superior orbital fissure even in your anatomy it might just be a sort of revision for you but it it's a very very important question so the structure that are present in your uh, 
this portion of a superior orbital fissure can be remembered with the mnemonic LFT. So there is presence of lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve and your trochlear nerve. While the structure that are present over here will be your, can be remembered with the mnemonic A, N, O. So that is your abducens nerve, your cilia, uh, nasociliary nerve and then your oculomotor nerve. So both the divisions, your superior and inferior division of oculomotor nerve will be present in this portion of your superior orbital fissure. Also in this, within this tendinous ring, there is presence of your optic foramen which is or optic canal which is basically going to contain your optic nerve and your ophthalmic artery so again this is extremely important so you have to know all the structures that are passing your superior orbital fissure and also the structures that are going to pass through your optic canal which is your optic nerve and your ophthalmic artery now coming on to orbital fascia so what is fascia fascia is a dense connective tissue so uh, when the connective tissue that is present in the eye or the fascia that is present in the eye is going to line all the intraorbital structures and uh, this fascia can further be divided into three parts so the fascia that is going to line your eyeball per se is known as fascia bulbi or tenons capsule extremely important okay So fascia bulbi will start right at the limbus and will extend backwards up till the optic nerve. So you can appreciate it over here. So it starts from your limbus and will go up till your optic nerve. So this is your fascia bulbi. In the inferior portion, this fascia bulbi is going to show thickening and it will form a, sense, a sort of ligament over which your globe is resting. So something like this. Okay, and this ligament like structure that your that is basically thickening or condensation of your fascia bulbi is known as ligament of Lockwood. It is an important point and has already been asked previously. So you have to remember this. Apart from your fascia bulbi, other structures that are engulfed or en ensheathed by your fascia will be your extraocular muscles in the form of extramuscular sheath. And there will be presence of intermuscular septa. So in between the sheath that is going to uh, enclose your uh, recti muscles, they are again going to be linked to each other with the help of uh, your connective tissue or your fascia, which is known as intermuscular septa. So orbital fascia basically will have three portions, your fascia bulbi, your muscular sheath and your intermuscular septa. So you have to remember this. Also, there are presence of various spaces or your orbit can be divided into various spaces. The first being your sub space. So, the space that is present between the tenons capsule and your sclera will form your sub space. So, the light blue color over here that you see is, is your sub space. All your four recti muscle, your superior, inferior, medial and lateral recti. So, they spread like this. So, they start from the apex like uh, the pointed tip of your cone and then this travel outwards onto the globe and attach onto the globe. So there is presence of medial lateral superior and inferior recti which are going to attach onto the sclera. So they are going to form a cone like space. So this space that you see here will that is basically lined by your muscular sheath and your intermuscular septa is known as intraconal space. So this is an intraconal space while the extra Conal space will be bound by your muscular sheath and the orbital rim. This space beyond your muscles would be your extra conal space. So we have seen subtenal space, we have seen intraconal space, and we have seen extra conal space. And then there will be a space lining between the periorbita and your orbital bone that will be your sub periosteal space. So these are four spaces into which any sort of mass or tumor can develop and can cause further pathologies that I'll be discussing later in the subsequent slides. So I've already told you about orbital fascia and your ligament of Lockwood, also known as suspensory ligament. So that's all from the anatomy of the orbit and I'll see you next topic in the orbit. Thank you.